Welcome back, my beautiful friends. You're listening to A Moment of Zen right here on 710 WOR, The Voice of New York. I am your host, Zen Sands. Now, up in just a few minutes, we have our influencer segment brought to us by Revere Securities, and we are featuring Tony Shanna. His name is synonymous with the counterintelligence sector, counterterrorism, and counterhuman trafficking. And we are chatting Russia, Ukraine, cyber attacks on the US, counterterrorism, all from Tony's point of view. And what a point of view that is. Having spent much of his youth in the 1990s working with the intelligence services in his native South Africa, a time in which he was embedded for long periods in paramilitary groups. Tony has gone on to turn himself into a world renowned expert on private security and combat operations, acting as a consultant for everybody from the New York Police Department to the French Foreign Legion to the Afghanistan National Army, to the Mongolian Quick Reaction Force. As that was not enough, as a sportsman, he's achieved the highest of accolades, retiring as an undefeated world heavyweight karate champion and first recipient of Martial Arts Hall of Fame Silent Heroes Award. He has consistently built on his defensive tactics arsenal, becoming one of the premier experts and advisors in the world today. He runs the majority of his current security operations out of his company, Mosaic, which stands for Multi-Operational Security Agency Intelligence Company. You can check them out at mosaicsec.com. And what a great name, might I add. Looks like a model. You guys have to check him out. Go to his website at tonysiena.com. Now, Mosaic integrates technology deep source intelligent combined with cyber and surveillance intelligence in order to address current and emerging threats. Now, threats to multinational corporations, governments, and even non-governmental organizations to up to private individuals. Now, that's a big, big job he's got cut out for him. Mosaic is widely regarded as one of the world's leading crisis management firms. And today we are welcoming Tony from a remote location. Welcome to the show, superstar. Thank you so much and for that massive introduction. Much appreciated. Well, you have a massive career and massive accolades under your belt. In addition to that, at the age of 25, you you retired undefeated as a world heavyweight karate champion. Talk to me about that because I find that fascinating. Did that kick off your 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 passion for wanting to be on the front lines essentially? No, that started beforehand. As as you said, I um, I grew up in South Africa, and um, you know I was first recruited in a very complex time where we were getting rid of a horrible system of apartheid, and we were trying to ensure that there wouldn't be a civil war. You know, we had terrorism, we had uh, you know extreme extreme right, the extreme left, we had false flag operations. It was just a, a crazy time where we were trying our very best to avert any civil war. And I think what was accomplished was really remarkable when you look at the sort of landscape of wars today and in the last few decades, you know, what was accomplished in South Africa without a civil war is really remarkable. I was just a, a young, you know, very young man at the time and only really contributed, um, you know, very little in that process, but am quite proud that, you know, um, that was achieved without a civil war. Well, um, and and that, what, that was prior to. Okay. And what and who might I say, who inspired your career path or what? Well, I didn't plan to go into this industry. I was studying international trade with a sort of major in law. I was going to go into maritime law, actually. That was my my goal. And I got recruited by my by my law professor. So um, <laughs> it changed the the trajectory of my life and to get in a completely different direction, which at first I was not, you know, happy about when I kind of understood the positions I was in. Now I'm very happy about it because it gave me a, a very sort of different life and lifestyle that um, probably more suited to me. 
Yes, of course, of course. And you're also an accomplished actor. Uh, we'll talk about that in, in just a little bit. But let's chat Russia for just a tad. Um, almost daily since Russia's invasion of Ukraine, the United States and, uh, and, and allies in Europe and Asia have been tightening the sanctions vise on Moscow. Yet even these devastating blows to the Russian state and its economy didn't give, you know, Putin any kind of pause at this lunatic at this lunacy that he continues to unleash these brutal assault, assaults on Ukraine um, on Ukraine's second largest city now clearly Putin's grand ambition is to be recognized as a feared leader of a great power and I feel like only one sanction in the US arsenal would tarnish Putin's image and Russia's reputation enough to potentially bring him back from the brink of world conflict and world war and that would be designating Russia as a state sponsor Sponsor of terrorism, and that would hurt Russia's financial system. What what do you say to this? And do you feel that he's going to retaliate? I mean, it's a lot more complex than it always is, right? In war, there's all kinds of agenda and multi-agenda. The main thing at the moment is the NATO, yes, NATO, no issue. Right, which is understandable, really, on both sides. I mean, it, it, it really catapulted him. Um, let me step back a bit. You know, he, he invaded and annexed uh, Crimea, and the European Union did nothing. Uh, now, years after, he has, you know, the bravado to do what he's done. Um, but now, the biggest thing in question is. For him, he never wanted NATO on his borders. He never wanted um, the traditional enemy on his borders. So he did warn about that and then eventually invaded, also feeling the bravado from successfully annexing Crimea and no one did anything about it. Question now is you restrict the airspace and America gets involved in supplying weapons or backing or, you know, trades on planes, which today was denied the Polish aircraft. It's, 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 that's what escalates things in a place we do not want to be. Uh, sanctions, yeah, it becomes a, becomes a, a terrorist state. Okay, but I, I don't think that's really even going to do it, uh, quite frankly. Uh, right. Sanctions thus far uh, has not sort of restricted him from from changing, you know, what he's trying to accomplish, uh, you know, India, China, etc. Still, you know, he he, he has a, a that relationship uh, restricting the world from oil. That's you know not going to prevent us from doing anything. So it's very complex. It's the, it's really the NATO issue. Right, right, right. And the way he's advancing, yes. It's it's kind of interesting yeah. because you know now this is this is going to bring on um, a lot of ripple effect, uh, especially on the human trafficking side. The Russian invasion of Ukraine at this moment has triggered a mass exodus of civilians scrambling literally to escape what is the first major armed conflict right in Europe since the Second World War. But the United Nations reported that more than 1.5 million refugees have crossed from Ukraine into neighboring countries. <laughs> But many of the women and children are desperately trying to flee, but they're facing another horrific threat, right, Tony? Mm -hmm. The criminals are offering these unaccompanied women and children promises of safe accommodations and, and free transport, posing as good Samaritans to lure them away from the safety of these official checkpoints. And as many as 7 million people could cross into neighboring countries such as Poland, Moldova, uh, Romania, Slovakia, and Hungary in the coming months, uh, which law enforcement says will create a disturbing spike in human trafficking. How do we even fight this or... Uh, or is this a great opportunity to identify these trafficking cells and bust them? Again, a very complex issue. And when there's instability, that's when human trafficking, traffickers take advantage. You know, uh, we saw that in Haiti, you know, where they're going around to orphanages, loading, you know, children on the back of, you know, vans with the promise of, you know, food and water, etc. So yes, that is a issue. Um, a massive issue, but primarily the world is focused, of course, again, on the potential of a world conflict 
and then secondary tertiary issues are also there, but they cannot be ignored. And it's unfortunate in war that, you know, to be focused on everything is almost an impossibility. That's where organizations come in that are focused on human trafficking and that can actually be deployed to those areas and specifically are there to curb those, those type of activities. Uh, fortunately, because that's when government cannot, because government is focused on a, a greater global threat. Understood. And that's where you come in. And you're definitely, I'm sure Mosaic is in high demand right now. Um, and another shift uh, on this front is now in, in New York City, we're on ultra high alert amid increased risk of Russian um, retaliatory cyber attacks. And city agents have seen more breach attempts amid, amid you know, the heightened tensions that have arisen from Russia's invasion of Ukraine. And Russia's military attack on Ukraine happened in conjunction with cyber attacks waged, waged on their critical infrastructure, right, from its banks to, to departments of government. And there's no guarantee that those attacks will be just limited to the Ukraine. What do you say to this? And should we be concerned? Absolutely. I mean, those attacks were launched way prior to any invasion, right? You know, getting into um, databases, etc. Hacking, uh, forward intelligence, the gaining of forward intelligence, really. And it happens with, with, with the Russian attacks on around the planet, you know, there are other sort of predatory, you know, cyber criminals, let's say, for advantage of that. So cyber is the platform for terrorism now, and it is the future, and it will just continue to escalate. But at this very moment, it will be taken advantage of by, you know, opportunistic criminals also. Besides exactly, exactly. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's scary stuff. Following the sanctions that the U.S. and our allies have have um, levied on Russia, there is an increased risk that Russia will carry out some, you know, form of retaliatory cyber attacks, particularly against New York State's infrastructure and individuals. I mean, it's just a matter of time at this point when we're going to hear, you know, um, hitting the news. But companies like yours, like Mosaic, you have a very niche market. You deal with high level, um, you know, projects, so to speak. Have you seen, and this is a, a very interesting, you know, perspective, have you seen a rise in demand for your services, given the state of where we are today in the world? Absolutely. I mean, it's unfortunately when there's conflict, war uh, of any nature, our business, you know, booms. It's just that's the way it is, right? Um, which is fortunate and unfortunate, of course, from a business standpoint. You know, we, we're extremely busy at the moment and have had to onboard, you know, more resources as we go along. Talk about cyber, I've had to onboard another two, you know, former senior CIA cyber guys, you know, so we have more of a cyber expertise. Of course, I own a company. I'm not I am not the cyber expert, so I got to, you know, recruit the best talent that's out there. We're opening a cybersecurity company out of Abu Dhabi, actually. That's where our cyber base will be. Uh, focused on on all kinds of issues. Uh, uh, also, you know, in, in you know the crypto space, etc. We will be doing things, um, but you know, we we get asked a lot on our clients are really the one percenters of the planets or, or uh, corporations or governments. So in a time like this, everyone is concerned and everyone wants our attention. And uh, that, that really spreads us thin a little bit. And that's where we're a more focused company. And we only onboard that amount of clientele because we have to deliver the best product for them, whether they're a government corporation or a high net worth individual. Got it. Got it. Well, listen, you are one incredible individual. You are the real life James Bond. So honored to chat with you. Can't wait to have you back and talk uh, blockchain, cryptocurrency and Web3. But it was a, a, it was a pleasure having you on. And I know that you did it from a remote location in, in unstable Wi-Fi. So thank you for pulling it off, my friend. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me.
You got it. Guys, check him out. Tony Shanna, check out his website, TonyShanna.com, or go to his uh, professional work website, MosaicSEC.com, and he's on the gram at I am Tony Shanna. You're listening to A Moment of Zen right here on 710 WOR, the voice of New York. That was our influencer segment brought to us by Revere Securities. We'll be right back after this. <laughs> 